Ruth Hine has a uh, long, uh, traditional history here in Mount Sterling. She uh, started the business in 1921 making Christmas candies uh, in her basement. Uh, that did really well and over the course of a few years it just grew and grew and uh, by word of mouth mostly. Uh, it grew uh, significantly that in the early 30s she had a factory built on West Main specific, specifically for the uh, candy shop. Uh, which is a real remarkable story. Again, you've got a woman in business surviving some of the hard ec economic times of the early 30s, so uh, had to be a real incredible personality there to, to achieve what she has done, and uh, we're just proud to continue that uh, today. And uh, more than word of mouth, we have the advantages of uh, the media and uh, internet and so forth, but uh, you know, we're still making the candy the same way that she did you know, nearly 90 years ago. We make uh, homemade suckers where they're all still cut by hand, uh, they're wrapped by hand, as well as the caramels. It's all poured on marble tables, uh, run through a cutting machine, and then they're wrapped by hand. Um, the cream candy, uh, they used to hand pull the, the cream candy, which was very labor intensive. Uh, we've got a me mechanical puller. The recipe's all still the same, but we're able to do a larger batch and use a machine to pull it as opposed to all those uh, ladies in the basement over on, on the, at the old factory. So we've mechanic, mechanicalized um, where we could, but there's still a lot of uh, hands-on, which I think is probably what makes us unique. It's just a handmade candy, basically, still. Uh, even the, the most automated candies, there's only so much that you can do with machinery that you can't replace those uh, delicate touches that the ladies are putting on the in the back. Yeah, and you know, by opting out not to freeze or, or really mass produce and store it uh, months in advance, uh, the cream candy has a, a low shelf life, which makes it difficult. A lot of times in December, during our busiest time, we'll make the candy in the morning and we're shipping it out that afternoon. So that sort of, I think, has been part of our success is people get you know, fresh candy without preserves and when they open up a box of our chocolates they actually can smell the, the ch full effect of the chocolate and there's no waxes or additives to the chocolate. So. Well for many years um, the Hunt family was sort of nervous about letting people in and, and doing tours. When we came in we decided you know you could find the recipe for cream candy in most traditional Kentucky cookbooks. Ingredients are on the package. Uh, really no big secret here. It's just a lot of work and uh, not most people probably don't have a marble slab in their in their house to make cream candy which is required. Um, so we did decide at that point you know to start opening our business up to tours and uh, let people come in and and see the, the magic that we do in the back and um, in fact I think they go out with a better appreciation of, of how the candy's made and realize the work involved and they're more than happy to, to buy it from us as opposed to you know the, the threat of maybe this recipe you're getting out and making it at home it's it's just a lot of work but we've done it batch after batch and really perfected the, the recipe but um, it's a again a very straightforward simple recipe uh, ingredients are the same as they were, you know, 80 years ago. Uh, it's just work involved, and the candy can be a little tricky to make. It's um, really difficult in humid weather. You got to know the temperature to take it off the, the stove, and, and the time that it's pulled, and so forth. So uh, anyone can can make it. Uh, it's just a little tricky. Yeah, I think the the key has been the the attention to detail, keeping the quality up. Again, uh, people come in and expect a certain quality when they come to Ruth Hunt, so you know, if we hadn't been able to keep up with that, they definitely wouldn't be coming back. And just the tradition, uh, Christmas is a huge season for us. We've got older clientele who, again, uh, used to eat the candy when they were in their youth, and now in their 70s and 80s, sort of want to share that with their family. and. Uh, has really uh, 
really, I guess, kept the business in, in their heart as they've grown old and, and shared it with uh, their family. So, you know, I, I think part of the success is the community here, the people that obviously are supporting it. Um, you know, we make a great product, but without the public support, uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to survive. So we've got fortunate enough to have good community, good employees, uh, a great traditional past. Uh, so I really don't see any any end to it. Uh, we just, again, um, over the years, we've tried many different things, introduced new products, but again, it just goes back to you've got the people that, you know, you can't get cream pulled cream candy just anywhere. Uh, and if you come in on certain days that we're making it, you can get it actually right up fresh, uh, still chewy, as, as a lot of the locals uh, come in and, and will ask for. But there's just very few places that make that type of candy, and uh, you know, I really don't see an end to, to it pretty soon.